Alright guys, thanks for tuning in iCup TV. It'll be your epic announcement and fun caster fits here. You guys are tuning in iCup Clan League Season 20, week number 4 between uh, Blue War After Dark and Walk Clan. And now the interesting thing of uh, this series so far, um, it's series number one, game number two. So Walk Clan was able to uh, get a Ling, uh, Ling Rush into, get a Ling uh, run by into uh, Ike's base from last game and ultimately won the game. So let's go introduce our players here. Now, for Brutal After Dark, it will be the spawning in the bottom left. It will be the Blue Terran on Fighting Spirit. It will be um, Brutal After Dark's Ike here. And then also his partner, it will be Brutal After Dark's Feeling. And uh, so they're going to be competing for Bad or Brutal After Dark. And then for Walk, it will be Walk's, Walk's Zack spawning in the top left as the White Zerg. And then spawning in the bottom right, it will be the Brown Protoss. Walks Yank. So now it's gonna be interesting because it, it's cross positioned on Fighting Spirit. Now uh, you could look at you can look at the you know the bases and etc. But you know two v two you're not gonna fe. It's just a fast expand. It's just not going to happen. So what we should talk about in the map in general is that how the large the scale of the map is absolutely huge, which means it's going to be very very difficult for per se you, you, his uh, someone's partner to go help reinforce from an attack. So what this pretty much means is. I would I expect super aggression from from either or team or both because if you're able to kill off one opponent then you pretty much guarantee a victory and you know that's pretty much the whole point of it so it's gonna be interesting because you know keep in mind you know you know Brutal After Dark is, is spawning in the top right and top in the uh, top right and bottom left and walks in the top left and bottom right so we we shall see and we're also seeing let's see what, what's this. We're going to see Ye seeing a nice little scout off to seeing what uh, Ike's going for. Again, we'll see if he's going to be getting a tight wall. That, that should be a tight wall, unless there's a little space back there. I'm not quite sure. Ooh, but Dob, uh, most think we're going to be going bio for Ike this game, which I always prefer. I always, like, prefer watching. I, I think, uh, no, not to say Mech was boring. I, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with those TVPs between, uh, Joe Kim and, um, uh, I, uh, Lime. Uh, <laughs> I forget his name, but, uh, Slime or whatever the guy's name is. I find that, but uh, but Bio, I think, in my opinion, is much more interesting. I think you guys find it much more interesting. But uh, we, we shall see if the micro on that is going to be on uh, top of the line. Now, just because they didn't wall off correctly, now this might mean that they would want to go attack um, Ike here just because they want to get a, a link run by, but we'll, we'll see. Now, we're going to be seeing... Uh, hmm, what is, he, what is he doing? He's still... He's going speedling, so he's just showing mass speedling, but the only problem is he didn't get up a macro hatch. Uh, I don't, I don't know what feelings actually trying to be doing right now, um, and apparently his APM is like actually lackluster right now. He's, uh, he's under 60, but uh, what have you? Oh, all these other players are over like 230. I'm like, that's 60, 67. There we go. Look at that APM. Where the hell is that? But it looks like he's gonna actually fast expanding macro hatch on the low ground, which in the later stages of the game will help out uh, uh, Brutal After Dark if they're able to keep that alive. Now keep in mind, we're seeing a two gate. We're seeing a two gate and we're seeing fast muta. Uh, and we're seeing a cannon defensive positioning. And that should be a four going down. It will be indeed. So it's just even helping out that much more. Because this is what you need to do to help reinforce. You can only put up static defense. It's like that's the only thing you can do. But they realize that they can not attack the Terran. As he has way too many Marines by this point in time. Actually, it's an insane amount of Marines by three wins of the game in my opinion. Wow. And he's, he hasn't even cut any SCVs. Wow. But here we go. Will they be able to just break that down as a phone right here? He does have the shells right here. Will they get surrounded though? Well, Yanks have to be very, very careful with that. But yeah, this is one of the problems of taking the space. Um, now, now Yanks is actually. Oh, what? I think. Yeah. yeah. Feeling gets the cancel. Now Yanks is gonna be able to wall this area off. So now Feeling can't really do anything. And now they've kind of really uh broken up. Uh, Brutal after dark. Cause now they can start target firing either or of the players here. I think the better player to go attack would probably be feeling, but they do not know that. They're going to be going for for the for the more person who's heavily bunkered in, but we, we, we'll see. Because th those links are not going to be able to break through the store. There's way too many Marines there. The best thing to do is send up one Zergling, which he's going to be doing right now. Sees that there's way too many Marines, and he's going to back off. And look at that. He's going to be backing off right away. He's going to have speed available to him. Now we're going to see games being checking to... Still two gate, no cyber core yet. We're gonna be in his gas before cyber core. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what he's gonna be checking to. Uh, something that's very gas heavy. But these four zealots are gonna be very impossible to break through right now. Any more zealots, just one more is gonna be coming up. And will he start snatching that base until uh, that cyber core comes down? I guess he will. Uh, maybe getting plus one, early plus one could be the issue. Um, 
And the reason for this is probably because he just wants to be able to kill off these Zerglings with two hits instead of three, I believe, because these guys are doing 16, yeah. Um, the plus the plus one will be able to help him. We're, seeing, we're probably going to be seeing a, t a, a, a t um, stim timing push. He'll be pushing down here. Now, Ike can really do some damage here now. Ike has the ability to stim. Ike has the ability to push up a ramp here. Ike has the ability to he can do multiple things. Well, it looks like he's going to be uh, going for uh, Yanks here, but I can go attack, go help out his opponent here. I can go attack, you know, Zach here because he's only getting, you know, you know, uh, a couple of units and he only has, actually, no, well, three cans actually a lot. But so he can do one of two things: he can go help out his opponent, or he can go uh, his ally, me, and or go and help out, uh, or go try to attack uh, the protest. Now he's going to be doing that. Now he's going to be trying to. I thought I heard something's going down, but so what have you? Here we go. We'll beat up. He's going to be sending up this ramp. Will this not be able to do enough damage? Uh, he's stalling for time for the cans to get up here, but he's doing a pretty good job with it. And he's done enough damage. He's done enough time to stall. And that push did get um, knocked down. And there's a GG by feeling again. And that was a very quick 2v2 series. And, uh, wow. And, wow. You know, and I think I think what we saw there is just, you know, a lack of, of communication, more or less. I mean, Ike... I don't know. I mean, Ike... I mean, keep this in mind. If this is a whole lot about what ifs that could have happened, but the game would have looked different if Ike helped, went out to help his um, help out feeling there. They could have killed off the, the zealots with no problem because they could stim and, and kite all day. Kill that off. Now that leaves, uh, you know, trying to feeling more able to do whatever he wants. Now, now again, I mean, there, there's still a there's, there's still a third party there that's Zach who could you know come in there and do whatever the hell he wants. But, I mean, it's just something that he probably could have done something a little bit better, I think, decision-making. He didn't really, he, he should have sent a Marine up there and see what he could have done. I don't think taking his whole army and trying to steam up there was the best idea. But if he wanted to try to break through it, it was an all-in, what have you. Uh, otherwise, not, not terrible. Like I said, both players are going to go for the most aggressive standpoint ever. And once they take out one person, it's pretty much over. And, I mean, that's what we saw. I mean, I mean, we saw... Zach was trying to go for Ling, like a, like a Ling, like Mass Ling, but he went, he took his Mac right down the lower guy, which was more risky, and he couldn't put up, he, he, he was too far behind, he had to cancel that, he had to put the Mac in his face, and the Mass Ling doesn't work anymore because you can't get surrounded on Zealot. So that, that, that part lost. So, I mean, from that from that standpoint, you know, Wa Clan knew how to counter that very effectively. Now, it would have looked I know, differently if Feeling went for. You know, Macrash on the low ground and got Spire fast. That would have looked a lot more different. Uh, you know, there's a lot of what ifs, and I'm not, I'm just not sure if uh, Brood War before uh, Bre 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 Brood War after Dark actually figures out what to do with GP2. But hey, interesting game nevertheless. I like to see creative builds anyway. Um, but uh, guys, thanks for watching this. So that means that uh, Wallach has won this series. So uh, we'll go on to uh, what well, uh, won this. Yeah, won this series. So. Um, We'll see. We'll see you on the next series, guys. Thanks for watching iCup TV. I got fit signing up. Peace.